But if I want to make the primes, a, a generator of primes would be the sieve of Aristosthenes. This is a what's called a prime sieve. How does a prime sieve work? All right, let's we'll start off with one. I know it's not prime, but two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 21, 22, 23, 24, I'm bored now, dot, dot, dot. All right, one's nothing, right? It's one. Two's a prime. What's a composite? A composite is a thing that has prime factors that are not one in itself, right? Two's a prime. What would that tell you about every multiple of two? Four would have to be a what? Has to be a composite. Six has to be a what? Composite. So every once you find a prime, you could knock off every multiple of that. So I could all of a sudden say, well, wait a second. Since I found two, I'm going to knock off four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, et cetera. What have I done to all integers? How many have I gotten rid of? Half of them are gone. Now, this theorem says if I was looking for a number, I have to look. If I want to try to factor it, I'd look to its square root. Another variant uh, is if you found a prime and you crossed off every multiple, everything that you have not crossed, up, crossed off up to its square must be prime. So I haven't crossed off three, so automatically I found a new number. It must be prime. But if three is a prime, every multiple of three must be composite. So I'll cross off, well, I already crossed off six. Oh, there's a new one. I already crossed off 12. Oh, there's a new one. 18, knocked that one off. Oh, 21's gone. Uh, 24 was already crossed off. But I have more that I've crossed off. But that little rule says if I haven't crossed off a number up to who? Up to 9, those numbers must be what? Prime. So 5 has to be prime and 7 has to automatically be prime. So I'm going to go to 5. Let's cross off every multiple. Or 10, 15, 20. Oop, there's a new one, 25. At least crossed off a new one. Now I actually can stop if I want. Anything that I have not crossed off up to 25 is now prime by that theorem. So how many numbers have I found? Oops. Those are all primes. Could I make more primes? Well, sure. I could actually go to 7. And cross off every multiple of 7, and then everything that I have not crossed off all the way up to 49 is actually prime. But then I could go to 11 and cross off every 11th, and everything that I have not crossed off all the way up to 121 is now prime. So I only need to use this sieve up to the number 11, and I can find all primes up to 121. And we can just keep going, right? Kind of an interesting question. I keep crossing things off. I crossed off half. I crossed off, well, third. Some of them were already crossed off, but I'm crossing off every new. And I cross off every seventh and 11 and 13 and 17 and 19 and 23. Do you think I'm going to eventually cross them all off? I keep crossing out. If I don't cross off like all of them after a certain point, that would mean primes have to be what? Infinite. If I cross off everything after a certain point, primes would have to be what? They'd have to be finite. Kind of an interesting question. Is it prim is, are primes infinite or are primes finite? 
Can you see how you could use it? It's pretty straightforward code, a prime sieve. Uh, I make my students do that, so. So we can make prime sieves. Why are prime sieves necessary? We need primes. <laughs> primes are the skeletal structure of all numbers, so I better know where they are and be able to find them. For very, very large numbers where you haven't figured it out yet, they actually have primality tests that give you a statistical, I think this might be prime up to like, a, I'm 99% confident. Why can't you tell me? Because I can't factor it. It's just too big of a number. So after a while, there's things that are just simply not doable. Because how do you factor? Factor is you got to check all the primes. If you have a very large number, you have to generate, well, if primes are finite, it wouldn't be a lot. If primes are infinite, I got a problem. And how many are there? And so that'll be our first questions here. How many primes? So if I would just say, let's make a guess. Let's guess that primes are finite. So that, I think I cross them all off. I'm just going to guess that. That would mean my primes as a set is going to start off with prime one, prime two, prime three, all the way up to prime n. I'll use a capital N, big. Okay, so if I would guess that, um, I don't know, since I don't know who all the primes are, a lot of people start off with two, three, five. I don't, I don't really know what they are, and I really don't care about their order. I just got, I have them. Um, let's consider this new number. I'm going to call this new number, say, Q. Q is going to be prime 1 times prime 2 times everything up to prime N. I'm just going to take all those primes and multiply them. Let's make a big number. Right? I'm going to make a composite. And then I'm going to add one. This number, right, must be prime or composite. Either way, it has a prime that must divide it, right? Because a prime divides itself. Three divides three, five divides five. So prime or composite doesn't matter. It has to have a prime that divides it. Five divides five, 12, two divides 12. It has a prime that divides it. So we know, so note, all numbers have a prime factor. For example, 3 divides 3, if it's prime, we get that, but like 2 divides 12. If it's a composite number, one of the primes divides it. On the other hand, if it's prime, it must divide itself. <coughs> so is everybody okay with me stating that? I don't care what this number is, a prime must divide it. Okay, fine. So some prime, I don't know what it is, I'm going to call it, say, pi, divides q. So pi divides q. And not only that, obviously, pi has to divide p1 times p2 times everything up to pn. Does that make sense? It's one of the primes. Oops, if I not drop this. That's the bad thing about having this laptop. It's bigger. What do I know about divisibility? If you have something that divides A and it divides B, it must divide what? any combination of the two, right? We already have this little theorem, right? 
we know that if A divides B and A divides C, A must divide some sort of MB plus NC, right? Any sort of linear combination you want at all. What does that do for this problem, though? That now says that, well, wait a second. Um, that would mean that my prime could divide Q minus P1 times P2. I'm going to pick Pn. All I'm going to pick is a positive 1 times the first and a negative 1 times the second. But let's look back at Q. What, if, what would be Q minus that product? What's left over? That's just 1, right? But this equals 1. So you're telling me that the prime divides 1. What divides 1? Nothing. This is false. So what must have been my original assumption? It was wrong. So it ends up that my guess, ah, what does this all mean, ends up being a proof by contradiction. So if I would guess, uh, let's, well, if I'd rather say my theorem then so, tells us, so okay. So the theorem is primes are infinite. And the proof is just simply C above. Above is a proof by contradiction of this statement. Because what's the opposite of primes are infinite? Primes are finite. And what did I show? Primes are finite is always false. That means that the primes have to be infinite. But I cross out an awful lot. Well, maybe they just get really, 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 really rare. Maybe there's almost no primes out there. It's like one prime every 10 to the whatever, right? And so primes are infinite, but the next question would be, all right, how dense then? What would be the density of the primes? And the next theorem would be, we have a little definition. Pi of n is simply equal to the number of primes at or below n. So for example, what's pi of 10? How many primes are below 10? Two three, five, seven. So there's four. <laughs> four. So what would be pi of 11? 11 is a new prime, right? So how many do I have? Five. What would be pi of 12? Still five, right? I didn't find a new prime yet. Let's go back to our C Verastasenes. What is pi of 25? How many primes are below 25? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? So pi of 25 is nine. Is everybody okay with that? You just count how many primes are below you. The theorem is simply that pi of x behaves like x divided by the natural log of x. What this is really saying is if you would take the limit as x goes to infinity and pi of x and you divide by x divided by the natural log of x, you would get 1. In other words, pi of x is your counter. Let's actually count the primes. I can approximate it. <laughs> Take the number x, divide by the natural log of x. That'll tell you about how many primes there are. So, so this, is, this is an approximation theorem. So for example, what would be pi of 10 to the sixth power? What's 10 to the sixth? A million, right? This would be approximately 10 to the 6 divided by the natural log 
of 10 to the 6th, which is equal to 10 to the 6th divided by 6 natural log of 10. Since we're approximating anyway, could you approximate this without a calculator? Uh, what's the natural log of 10 about? What's logarithm asking? Logarithm is asking, what's the base to what power gives me my number on the inside? Natural log is base what? E. E to what gets you close to 10? What's E about? Three-ish, right? So three to three-ish, it's less than that, but three to what would get you close to 10? Two. So it's about a little bit greater than two, right? So this would be about two, a little bit more than two, right? Six times something a little bit bigger than two, somewhere between 12, since we're approximating anyways, just go straight to 20, right? And which would be a lot bigger, or we could go down to 10 if you wanted to and round it down. If I round it down to 10, if I make this number too small, I make the answer too big. If I make the bottom too big, I make the number too small, but we're still talking about size. If this is 10, about how many primes are there less than a million? Nobody? 100,000? If it was 20, it would be about 50,000? So somewhere between 50 and 100,000, just off the top of our head. Is that a lot of primes? Yeah. But on the other hand, what's the limit as x goes to infinity of x over the natural log of x? The Hopi Tiles rule? No? Take the derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom. Derivative of the top is 1. The derivative of the bottom is 1 over x. Flip it over. It's x. x goes to infinity. It's infinity. No big surprise. <laughs> right? We could use the Hopi Tiles rule and prove that. How many primes are there? There's an infinite number. I should get infinity, and I got infinity. Right? On the other hand, you could check a percentage. What percentage of numbers are prime? We could say we could use this to do percentage primes. Percentage primes would be how many primes do you have divided by what's the total of numbers you have, right? But what would that be approximately? X over the natural log of X divided by X, which is what? 1 over the natural log of X. What does the percentage do the further we go up? This is going to zero. So they do become rarer. Right? So we can talk about like what's the percentage of primes that we have to look for. The further we get, the rarer they are. So we have an infinite number of primes. Uh, we can talk about the density of primes. We can approximate counting primes by x over the natural log.